Wow. I feel good to be back in this series, you know, uh, yeah. I just want to get on to it. I'm reading out of the Annals of the Coxie Quails. This is the translation uh, from um, the Coxiquel Maya by Adrian Resinos and Delia Delia Goetz Goetz. The title of the Lords of Totanikapan. All right, man. So we got to yeah. Those you know, this is the Resinos version. We got the. Uh, we got the Britain version in the uh, library, um, which uh, go ahead and click on below in the Drop Library. And we got some of that before, so you know we're picking up in the Frame and the Shape of series. You know what I mean? I guess this is part uh, eight, something like that. And we're just gonna, uh, you know, float down this riverboat here. You know, I'm going to jump around a little bit, you know, just to get familiar with this. Uh, I'm still looking for a, a PDF of the Racinos version. So, if you know, anyone can dig that up. The Annals of the Coxie Quails by Adrian Racinos. Um, you know, but the Britain version is up in the library right now. We're going to get the pop of us well. And, you know, just enjoy, man. Enjoy your cutoff day. Enjoy being cut off. Enjoy the weapon. Enjoy the power. So we're in part one. Here I shall write a few stories of our first fathers and ancestors, those who begot man of old before these mountains and valleys were inhabited, when there were only rabbits and birds. So they said, when our fathers and grandfathers went to populate the mountains and valleys, oh, my sons, in Toulon, I shall write the stories of our first fathers and grandfathers, one of whom was called Gagabits, the other Zakdakoa. The stories that they told us that from the other side of the sea we came to the place called Tula, where we were begotten and given birth by our mothers and our fathers, oh, our sons. Thus they related of your, the fathers and grandfathers who were called Gagabits and Zak Dekau, those who came to Tulan, the two men who begot us, the Kak Ila. You know, I like the fine print. So it says, one Tulan, the prehistoric city, distribution center of all the tribes of Mexico and Central America, as will be related later. So you keep hearing Tulan, you're talking Mexico, you're talking Mexi, all right? Two, it says uh, Gagabits, means hill of fire, volcano, and Zac Tecaua, or Tecau, means white mountain, hill of snow, or pure mountain. The word bits or uits is Maya. It means hill or mountain. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so these are the names of the houses and clans of the Gekakuk and Bakahola. And Ziba Kiha, Katun and Katiu by name beget Bakuhola, Zanat and Gagu Gom 
so name beget Gaga Gucci Daki Au and Kahom Au beget Ziba Kihai. All right, it goes to the lineage, you know, and all these names. These are big names here. It says, here are the stories of Gaga Beats, which gives me here, and these four branches, which begin, there were the tribes. Here are the stories of Gaga Beats and Sekaku, Kau. This is the beginning of the stories which Gaga Beats and Zekdekau used to tell. From four places the people came to Tulan. Alright, so listen up. From four places. The people came to Tulan. In the east is one Tulan. Another in Zibalbe. Another in the west. From there we came ourselves from the west. And another is where God is. Therefore there were four Tulan. Oh, our sons, so they said, From the west we came to Tulan, from across the sea, and it was at Tulan where we arrived to be engendered and brought forth by our mothers and fathers. So they told us. So when we think Mexico, you know, just right quick, you know, we're going to keep floating down the river, but we, we also got to do some teaching here, man. We got to do some remembering here. We got to do some map finding, man. We got to remember our maps. Because it's all about perspective. So while we're reading this, I want to have perspective of what we're talking about with this America. See this. What they say, Kuzi America and Gune America. And what's to the left? This big landmass that connected all the way to Australia. What's to the right? Atlantis. In between here and Africa and you know, Europe and Asia. So this landmass that was sunk. And for a while these waters were unnavigable until 1492 when the partition was broken. And they could now reach you. And the game changed for you. You used to have a barrier between this and that particular hijack death that they were coming out of. The Black Plague. The disease that they were coming out of. They thought the world was ending in 1666. And they got new life when they found you, so-called Negro. You are sandwiched in between these land masses, Lil Murray and Moo. So when they say they come from the west and the east, they're saying they come from these lands. They saying they come from these lands. And that's what we were telling Horace Butler that you can't just skip over these large masses of land to get to Africa every time. Every time you hear east, it doesn't mean Africa. It might mean this large piece of land. And this might be happening a much more recent, you know, thing than your, our chronography has been, you know, given to us. All this chronology that they're given to us, man, has been, you know, placed and displaced and dropped off in all these different time periods. And we're now surfing a more recent time frame. We're now surfing a more recent wave. This was a recent knockout, man. This was recent technology. This was recent invasion. All right. I mean, let's keep drifting down the, down the now. Let's keep drifting down the now, man. So I'll read that part again. Because you're going to hear people say, oh, well, these people... Say they come from, you know, the east, the east. One, we know that they flipped our map from east to west. So the west is east and the east is west. We know we're flipped upside down. Let's flip ourselves right side up. 
this is the East anyway. But now you hear them say that from four places the people came to Tulan, and the East is one Tulan, another in Zilbal Bay, Zigbal Bay, another in the West. From there we come, we came ourselves from the West, and another is where God is Hawa. Therefore, there were four Tulans, O oh, our son. So they said, From the west we came to Tulan, from across the sea, and it was at Tulan where we arrived to be engendered and brought forth by our mothers and our fathers. So they arrived to be brought forth by their mothers and fathers. I mean, you gotta, you know, just dig on it, just imagine, all right? It's a lot that we don't know. So the picture that you have, don't be so, you know, uh, abrupt, you know what I'm saying, to think that that's the uh, full, full Picasso, you know. Don't be so abrupt to think that you got the whole portrait. There's a lot you don't know, man. You got to be humble about this. Then the obsidian stone was created by the wondrous Zilba Bay. By the precious Zilba Bay. Alright, now I'm going to go to the F5 print. This obsidian stone, huh? What's that? What's going on with this obsidian stone? All right, so I'm going to read the little fine print, number eight. It is clear that the author wished to name this site as the origin of the four groups of the people that arrived at Tulan. Not those who came from Tulan, as translators have mistakenly read. This passage is sometimes interpreted as meaning that there were of old four places called Tulan. So it's not just Mexico or Meshi. Maybe there was a Tula, a Tula in Atlantis. Maybe there was a Tula in Lemuria. Perspective. All right. Maybe we said there's a Tula over here. There's a Tula over here. There's a Tula somewhere over here. All right. Up, down, left, right. So two la is a title. It, it you know, kind of, kind of, kind of seems like a Jerusalem type of thing. There's a Jerusalem here. There's a Jerusalem wherever the people are, wherever the people are gathered. I'm right, gonna get back in that library. Like I said, you can get a. Uh, let's see if we can grab it. Yeah, man, get that drop. Oh, we, we'll, we'll be right back. The world's beyond a pole. Please believe it. G and E. The annals of the Coxy Quail. So right here, we got the, uh, this is the Britain version when you pull it up. So I think this is actually the original joint um, that uh, predates even what I'm, I'm reading right now. So dig on this one, man, because we got this one in the previous series and dig. You know, go back, man, and dig on the previous frame and shape of series so you can really get the depth of the frame and shape that we broke down before. And we'll be right back, man, in that pop of bug. We'll be pulling that up. I already got it up for us, man. We're going to jump right into the first four men. Oh, boy. But, uh, don't get ahead of yourselves. We're just uh, floating down the Nile. <laughs> don't trip, man. Hawa. So two line, two line is everywhere, huh? North, south, east, and west. <laughs> I'm still reading the fine print. It says this passage is sometimes interpreted as meaning that there were of old four places called two line, omitting. That Tula, omitting the Tula, where God is, 
and the Tula of Zilbal Bay. Zil Zilbal Bay spelled, you know, I can't I can't, you know, pronounce some of this, man, but it's X I B A L B A Y. You know what I mean? So there's a Tula. So it's omitting the Tula where God is and the Tula of Zilba Bay. So what are they talking about the Bay Al? I don't know what they're talking. But we're just digging on it. So there's a Tula. There's a Tula east, west, north, south, it seems like. And there's a Tula where the, where the creator is. And there's a Tula where whoever this Zilba Bay is. All right? That's all I know. Okay, then it says the dominions of heaven and hell. So yeah, when you get the ball, you are talking about Baal. Interesting. Let's put it all together. Because we know we're talking about Hebrew people. And we're going to get that. So the dominions of heaven and hell would leave two centers from which the Mesoamerican races originated. Two centers from which the Mesoamerican races originated. So when you're talking about the copper color race found here, <laughs> I need you to I need I need you to connect this. Cause you know, we moving very speedy. I mean the most high is getting us a whole new warp drive, man. We're getting at a whole new warp drive. And repetition is everything. You have to see this a million conjillion times. Because of all the lies that have been put in your head. I ain't showed you this enough. You have to read. So you know we're not bullshitting. That when they set up their Declaration of Independence in 1776. And they wrote their first major publication of a dictionary the Noah Webster dictionary in 1828 about 40 years later or so 50 years later they had one definition one definition of an American an American and it was not anything to do with any of the hijacks you've seen on any of the tanto you know Indian whatever native american tribunal whatever you know what i'm saying civilized tribes it ain't got nothing to do with none of that and everything to do with the so-called negro because they're so calling you negro because you are an actual american but if i call you an american you think i'm talking about trump it has everything to do with the so-called negro but the Negro gets your attention and an American will fly over your head because you're thinking red, white, and blue. Even though they took that too. Negro, you are an American. You are a Hebrew American. You are a native of America originally applied to the aboriginals or originals or copper colored races body bag for the illusion. You did not come on boats from Africa. You are the copper colored races that they found here. Who? By the European. That's now taking the title of American. How can you prove it? Because it says, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. So if I say American, you think of the descendants of Europeans born in America. You think of the successors of the invaders. That have stolen your title according to the Dumb Die Versus 1452 Papal Bull. Subjugate these Negroes, take the titles, their possessions, everything, and put them in perpetual servitude. Copper color races, tribes, tribes, tribes. Let's just float down the river, not go too fast. 
so-called Negro. Copper color tribes. So we're just talking Tula. And it's a Tula here, Tula heaven, and Tula hell. Would leave two centers from which the Mesoamerican races originated. These niggas didn't come from Africa. They originated in one of these two loves. Historical documents nevertheless mention only one city of this name. All the indigenous sources of Guatemala, the Yucatan, and the Mexican Plateau speak of one primitive center of population which was called Tulan, Tulan, Zuiva, Bakupec, and Baku Ziva, the seven ravines, another seven, seven cities of gold, seven caves, seven caverns, you know what I'm saying, seven everything. And you're on the seventh day, Shabbat Shalom. Tulan Chico Maztoc, Tulan Park, which was a great city and the starting point of the immigrations which set out for the south of Mexico and Guatemala. This place has been identified in modern times with Tula in the state of Hidalgo. Huh, we gotta get into this Hidalgo. Site of the ruins of the capital of Quetzalcoatl, king of Toltec nation so since we're surfing the wave i know we enjoy these surfer surf <laughs> surfboards of all <laughs> we enjoy these uh body boards man all right i mean some people on jet skis man go crazy and we're talking kids of Koto. you know we're just talking kids of Koto, and they're relating him to their jesus or our Joshua, because we're just talking kids of cult. Not their Jesus, but our Joshua, Hawashua, who took you to your promised land and divided you into tribes and had 12 disciples from each tribe. So since we're talking kids of culture, this place has been identified in modern terms with Tula in the state of Hidalgo, site of the ruins of the capital of kids of culture, or Joshua, or Hawashua, Joshua, king of the Toltec nation. This place has been identified in modern times with Tula in the state of Hildago, site of the ruins of the capital or site of the capital of Joshua, king of the Toltec or king of these tribes of Israel. The phrase in the text, from the west we came to Tulan from across the sea. Again, the phrase in the text, and I quote, From the west we came to Tulan from across the sea. Is that Africa? And there's nothing wrong with our copper color and our beautiful family, all our melanated family across the plain, but we're just establishing us since everyone put us to sleep. I mean, we got to focus on this. We got to focus on us for a second. American copper color races found here. Who? What's this? I found some people. Are these the people of all the books we've been reading? Connected to the Garden of Eden and the terrestrial paradise in the Orinoco River, flowing out of Mount Roraima, found here by the Europeans. Copper color Negroes. We're just floating down the river and it's getting dark. The 
From the west we came to Tulad from across the sea. Listen. Searching. Agrees with Kachiquel and Quiche traditions of a primitive immigration. So something even further back, which took their forefathers to the place of Tulan, the common home of the people of Mexico and Central America. All right. When they made, let's go back to the obsidian stone. Then the obsidian stone was created by the wanderers Zigbal Bay, by the precious Zigbal Bay. Then man was made by the creator and the maker. And he gave homage to the obsidian stone. So man was made by the creator and the maker. And he gave homage to the obsidian stone. And then in, uh, in the small print it says, these are the same names given in the Papuva. To the creator and maker or framer and shaper. Wow. Is according to the Kise traditions, the gods made two unsuccessful attempts to create man using first earth and then wood. <laughs> All right. So he gave homage to the obsidian stone. When they made man, he fashioned him of earth. And they fed him with wood. <laughs> they fed him with leaves. They wished that only earth should enter into his making. But he did not talk nor he did not walk. He had neither blood or flesh. So our earthly fathers and grandfathers told us, Oh, my sons, they did not know what should enter into the man. But at length they found whereof to make it. Only two animals knew that that there was food in Paxil. In Paxil it says, Paxil Ika means nourishment food. And by anto, uh, Antomasia, or corn. According to the Mexican legend, Kitsukoto transformed himself into an ant to penetrate into Tanaka Petel. To steal the nourishing grain. All right, man. So only two animals knew that there that there was food in Paxel, the place where those animals were found, which were called coyote and the crow. The coyote animal was killed, and in his remains, when he was quartered, corn was discovered, and the animal caught or called Tiwa Tiwa, searching for the dough and the corn of the corn brought from out the sea the blood of the tapir and the serpent and with it the maize was kneaded with this dough the flesh of man was made by the creator and the maker thus the creator the maker the progenitors knew how to make man complete so they tell man having been made there resulted 13 males and 14 females there are always more women than men. There was one woman extra. Then they talked. They had blood. They had flesh. They married and multiplied. One of them had two wives. Thus they made it. So the old people used to say, Oh, our sons, they had daughters. They had sons. Those first men. Thus was the creation of man so the obsidian stone was made and setting out we arrive at the gates of Tulan only a bat guarded the gates of Tulan only a bat and there 
we were engendered and given birth. There we pay tribute in the darkness and in the night, O our son, said Gagavitz and Zekdakua. And do not forget the saying of our elders, our forefathers. These were the words which they bequeathed to us. Then we were commanded by our mothers and our fathers to come. We, the thirteen clans of the seven tribes, the thirteen groups of warriors. Then we arrived at Toulon in the darkness and in the night. Then we gave the tribute. When the seven tribes and the warriors carried the tribute, we took our places in the order at the left part of Toulon. There were the seven tribes. And I want to uh, get this page right quick as we get ready to continue. I'm skipping to uh, page uh, 55. All right, so when we arrived at the gates of Toulon, we received a red stick, which was our staff. Now this is pre-Bible. Pre something called Exodus and something called this. This is coming out of the quiche writings of these people here. When we arrived, this is coming out of the quiche writings, out of the original writings of the copper colored Negro found here by the European. The so called Negro, listen up. When we arrived at the gates of Toulon, we received a red stick which was our staff. And because of that, we were given the name of the Coxiquels. O oh, our son, said Gagavitz and Zektakur. Let us thrust the points of our staff in the sand under the sea, and we shall soon cross the sea of on the sand. Let us thrust the points of our staffs in the sand under the sea, and we shall soon cross the sea. The reed sea, red sea, reed sea, all the sand. Using the red sticks or reed sticks, which we went to receive at the gates of Toulon. Thus we passed over the row of sand. When it widened below the sea on the surface of the sand, immediately all were rejoiced when they saw sand below the sea. Thereupon they held counsel. There is our hope. There is our land, we must be re reunited, they said. Only there can we be organized now that we have arrived from Toulon. They plunged forward then and passed over the sand. Those who came at the rear entered the sea as we emerged from the waters on the other bank. Crossing the sea, making a crossing, making a migration, a crossing. Afterwards, the seven tribes became fearful. Then all the warriors spoke and the seven tribes said, have you not seen our gifts? Have we not humbled ourselves before you, O lords, O warriors? Did we not come with you to the east? Have we not come to seek our mountain and our valleys? So they're talking about their mountains. They're talking about their valleys. They're talking about their promised land. Let me get this other part, skipping to uh, page 171. Now, remember they crossed, they, they crossed the sea. And this is out of the Lords of Totinakapa. This is chapter 1. And they've seen those versions as well. Uh, this is translated by Dionisio Jose Colin or Colin. All right. So it says the wise men and the Nahuels, the chiefs and leaders of these great people and of others who joined them called you Mame, the old men, extending their sight over the four parts of the world, four parts of the world, to line stretch the four parts and over all that is beneath the sky and finding no obstacle came from the other part of the ocean from where the sun rises a place called pa tulan pa sivan servan the principal chiefs were four the first was named balam keats so this balam keats is the one that's is being uh, talked about later who has the staff that 
puts the staff in the water and they cross the sea following Balaam Keats or Moshe. Let's get it. Grandfather and father of us. So the first was named Balaam Keats, grandfather and father of us, Kaka Kavaki, the second Balaam Agab, grandfather and father of Nahai, the third Maha Kuta, trunk and root of the Kishays. The fourth was named Ika Balaam. These were the chiefs of the first nations or first tribe of Kishays, and the wife of Balaam Keats was named Zaka Puluma, the wife of Balaam Agab, Sununi Ha. The wife of Makatua, Kaha Kakika, <laughs> Iga Balam, was a bachelor. All right, he was a bachelor. The chief of the second nation or tribe of the Kishays were named Tamub. There were four also. All right, it names them. It says the chief of the third Kishay tribe or nation were also four. And it names them, those four. All right. Let's get right here. It says, These then were the three nations of Kishays, and they came from where the sun rises. Now let me back up. It says, Out of the family of Galakia and Zun Tahua, this tribe distinguished itself with the name Iaka or Iaka, L L O C A B, which is very familiar with Jacob, right? Iaka. And it says, These then were the three nations of Kishays. And they came from where the sun rises, descendants of Israel, of the same language and the same customs. This is page 170, after Resino's version, titles of the Lord of Totunakapan. So they came from where the sun rises, descendants of Israel, of the same language and the same custom. And when they arrived at the edge of the sea, Balaam Keats touched it with his staff. So this Balaam Keats or Moses, Moshe, Balaam Keats touched it with his staff. And at once a path opened, which then closed up again. For thus the great God wished it to be done, because they were sons of Abraham and Jacob. So it was that these nations passed through, and with them thirteen others called Vakumah. And we got to dig on the Vakuma, which literally means the seven tribes. So it goes back to the seven tribes. All right, man. So, you know, that's just a little bit of the Annals of the Coxie Quails, man. You know, we've just been taking a nice, uh, this nice river float, you know, just floating down the river. We've been in the drop library. We're about to dig a little bit on this Papu Va. Actually, what I might do is, uh, I got the pop of up right here. Let's see. Yeah, let's get this right quick. This is two minutes. We got some of this before. Let's dig on this two minutes. So, you know, we're just talking about the, uh, <laughs> Copper colored Negroes that are the actual Americans and their titles were taken by the European descendants. We know we're talking about the Dunbar versus 1452. Dig on it. Click the links below. We're just talking about the copper colored races. We're talking about the land that is sandwiched in between two great, great lands already and has an origin somewhere in this connection, right? So, now that we know we're just talking about the copper colored races, you know, maybe we can uh, dig a little bit on this. I think this cat either retired or got fired uh, right after he dropped this. <laughs> so, yeah. It was a bombshell on national TV. Earthworks. He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box. It was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been... Here we go, here we go. In 1860, David Wyrick, he's a guy who surveyed the Newark earthworks. 
He was digging into a mound near those earthworks and he found a wooden coffin made of oak. They opened up the coffin and found a skeleton of a man holding a little box. It was about 8.10 inches in size. The box had been cemented shut here. This, by the way, is sitting in Ohio. Well, he opened up the box and he found a little man inside, a little black stone. They took it to scholars and they looked at it. The man seems to be carrying something. And there's writing here. At first, they couldn't recognize. You also see an afro. Let go. Guys, the writing is, they thought in 1860, some sort of Hebrew. Well, finally, about 20 years later, they found some rabbis living in the area. And the rabbis looked at that. And they could read it. They said it was an old, old kind of block Hebrew, uh, block Hebrew, and it was a rendition of the Ten Commandments. Now, this is another piece. Block Hebrew. They said they'd never seen anything like it. Mainstream archaeologists at the time called this a hoax. But then in 1900, or just about after 1900, in Israel, they found the same block-style Hebrew writing. Mainstream archaeologists still dismiss the findings. They found it. So they just found Paleo Hebrew in the 1900s, which is why they don't really mess with it. They just stick to their modern Yiddish. They just stumbled on this language, this pure tongue, in the 1900s. And it's the same tongue, the same Paleo written, the Nine Commandments. In the how we cool New Mexico promised land. You got the same block Hebrew with your commandments or your realities on them. So let's go. In Israel and they found it in Ohio. But there was another stone that they found that they couldn't argue. This is the Bat Creek stone. It was found during the course of an official <laughs> Smithsonian evacuation. The Smithsonian didn't understand the, uh, uh, the meaning of the writing on the stone. They thought it was Cherokee, since it came from Cherokee country. They didn't realize that it's actually Hebrew. They had published this originally upside down. They threw it in a box at the bottom of the Smithsonian, put it in the basement. Many years later, a scholar took it out of the box, looked at it, and went, oh my gosh, it's upside down. It's Phoenician, ancient Hebrew. So what's going on here? <laughs> what is that about? Where is that history? Body bag, Daniel. Body bag. All right. Let's get to it. I mean, you know, we're just getting tuned up. <laughs> Ah, uh, wow. They just found you here, Negro. They just found you here, America. We ain't at Papu Va. We on page, man. 184. Let's get it bigger. Now, the interesting thing about the Papu Va, man, even when I read the, uh, let's see if I can find it. When I read the preface, the preface, <laughs> I like preface, man. I'm reading the preface, preface, you know, whatever, of the uh, Racinos, you know, Annals of the Cockatoo Quills I was just reading out of. And let me just read it, a little paragraph. It is a curious fact that the three outstanding literary works which, which throw the most light on the life and thoughts of the American natives come from the most, come from a small area situated almost in the center of the continent. Two of these works, the Papu Va and the title of the Lords of the Tatanakapan, were written by the Quiche people. So we were just reading out the titles of the Lords of the Tatanakapan which are in this Annals of the Kachi Quells, and it's also mentioning this document that we got up right here, the Papu Va. Now look how they compare them. They were both written by the Quiche people and are anonymous accounts of the life of that Indian nation 
The third one written by two well-known natives is the work which I present here in an English translation under the title The Annals of the Kaji Quails. Alright, so that's the three. So we got some out the Annals of the Kaji Quail. We got some out the titles of the Lords of Tatanakapan. And now we're going to get back to the Papu Va. Now check it. The descendants of these people are still living in the interior of Guatemala and occupy the same territory where their ancestors, after long migration, settled for the first time hundreds of years ago. Actually, the descendants of these people are the so-called Negro and hijacks now are trotting down your land. Now listen up. The Papu Va is a literary masterpiece. The Papu Va is a literary masterpiece, which has been known and admired by the world since its first publication in Europe in the 19th century. The Kakchiquel document is second only in importance to the Papu Va. So the Kakchiquel document that Racinos is translating right here in the book I'm holding in my hand is second is number two only in importance to the Papu Va and that's what we got up right here this is how we're digging on connecting the drop connecting the Old Testament what they're calling Old Testament trying to get out that spell out that English out that KGV hijack and we're you know putting you know we're with wisdom we're putting it together so we're surfing away all right and then it goes on and says the distinguished American ethnologist Daniel G. Britton published the original text and an English version of the Coxiquo Annals in Philadelphia in 1885. And that's what we got up in our library. Right here. Bang! <laughs> so this is the Britain version. You can dig on it, man. So according to the to the Racinos, to 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 Racinos in the in the preface, he says the distinguished American ethnologist Daniel G. Britton published the original text and in an English version of the Copsey Quail Annals in Philadelphia in 1885. So this is the Britain, you know, Philadelphia, 1885. So we got it, man. So we got it right here in the library for you. Alright. Right here in the library. And we also got up. That's what we're digging on right now. The Papu Va. So let's get to it. Ah. Cut off day. The first four men, these are the names of the first people who were framed and shaped. The first person was Balaam Keats. We just talked about Balaam Keats. What did it say about Balaam Keats in, in the Annals of the Coxy Quail? Let's take our time and get it right. Because we're going... Yeah, look, Racino's just said... That that the Kashi Quells is second only to this document, the Papu Va. We open the Papu Va and immediately we get that these are the names of the first people who were framed and shaped. The first person was Balam Keats who was framed and shaped. And this is the same Balam Keats that in page 170 this is when they rose from Patulan, Pasivan the first leader was Balaam Keats by unanimous vote. And then the great father, Naksik, gave them a present called Giran Gagal. Giran Gagal. Now, Giran Gagal, in the, in the fine print, it says the bundle. So what's that mean? So it says the creator gave them 
something called the bundle, Garango Gar, which was a symbol of power and majesty. Does that got something to do with the Ark of the Covenant? The bundle, a symbol of power and majesty. The carefully kept stone. So it was again this stone, maybe this, you know, sounds very similar to this Ark, this stone. Which, as related further on, made the other people's fear and respect the cliche. Whoa! So this stone, this bundle, something called Garan Gagal, G-I-R-O-N-G-A-G-A, G-A-G-A-L. Garan Gagal is also called the bundle or the symbol of majesty, the carefully kept stone. Remember that obsidian stone? Which, as related further on, made the other people fear and respect the cliche, respect the tribe. Just like the Ark of the Covenant, right? So we're connecting what they're calling the Old Testament with the cliche writings in the Papuva, the Annals of the Kachiquel, the Lords of Tinapa, Tinatipalan. And it says, when they arrived at the edge of the sea, Balaam Keats touched it with his staff. Balaam Keats touched it with his staff. And at once a path opened, which then closed up again. For thus the great God, Hawa, wished it to be done. Because they were sons of Abraham and Jacob. That's an Annals of Kachiquel, Racino's translation, right? The first four men, these are the names of the first people who were framed and shaped. The first person was Balaam Keats, the second Balaam Makab, the second Mahakuta, and the fourth Ika Balaam. The same that we just got, we just got that in the Kachikwa. These then were the names of our first mothers and fathers. <laughs> now right here says Balaam Keats, let's get it bigger. Balam Keats, ba -la, ba Alam, is a relatively common Maya name even today in its most literal sense. Ba Alam means jaguar. However, when used as a title, it carries with it a host of implicit meanings because of the, the nature of the jaguar. As the largest and fiercest animal of the Guatemalan jungle, so it's like king, the most fierce animal of the jungle. We're not. If we're talking, you know, Mexica, we're not talking necessarily African lions, right? So you'll be, your fierce animal would be a jaguar, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To them, it was the fiercest animal in the Guatemalan jungle. They didn't have the African lion. That's very interesting. Ba'alam is used to refer to anything powerful or mighty. The ancient Maya believed the first Balams acted as supernatural protectors in the night. Balam is also the title used by Itzamaya priests who continued to worship the ancient gods after the, inter after the introduction of Christianity. So they continued to worship their ancient power. Alright. Balaam Keith was the ancestor of the most powerful Kishé lineage. We're talking a lineage, people. Alright. Alright, let's go, let's go. The miraculous vision of the first men. It is said that they that they were merely given frame and shape. There we go. It's always frame and shape. Mother and father. Now this says they had no mother and they had no mother, they had no father. Alright, listen up. They were merely lone men, as we would say. No woman gave them birth. Wow. Let's back up. So it is said that they were merely given frame and shape. They had no mother, they had no father. They were merely lone men, and as we would say, no woman gave them birth. Nor were they begotten by the framer or shaper. Nor were they begotten by the framer or shaper. So who are these lone men who have no mother and father? 
that weren't created by your creator. Everyone today said, oh, but we all have the same God. No, we don't. I mean, no one thought that. <laughs> That's just an obvious thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nor were they begotten by the framework shaper. By she who has born children and he who has begotten sons. Shaper beget sons, follow the seed. Their fame and shape were merely brought about by the miraculous power and the spirit essence of the framer and shaper. And spirit essence of the framer and shaper. Wow, so it's like they weren't even begotten, I guess, in, in, in the terms of, you know, uh, maybe a certain type of formation or seed, but they were the actual spirit essence so this is very interesting stuff right here man i'm digging on it with you so who we talking about we still talking about Lam keats we still talking about Lam keats kids of Kulotu or kids kids so you see the kids right here is referring to the shaver now you got kids uh still talking Moshe, still talking, Hawashua, alright? So they were begotten by the spirit, by the Ruach, by the spirit essence of the framer and the shaper of she who has born children and he who has begotten sons, also known as Sovereign, that's wisdom, and Kitsil Serpent, that's why we said which serpent we have to have an indigenous drop an indigenous truth on this serpent not just a christian drop if christians see serpent as some super scary thing then you have to reverse everything in their translation or their perception <laughs> because you know there's a relevance to you that is very scary even today negroes are scary to them so if serpents are scary to them and Negroes are scary to them. That maybe these Negroes are Nagas. If you know what I mean. Thus their countenance appeared like people. People they came to be. They were able to speak and converse. They were able to look and listen. They were able to walk and hold things with their hands. They were excellent and chosen people. Their faces were manly in appearance. They had breath, therefore they became. They were able to see as well, for straight away their vision came to them. Perfect was their sight, and perfect was their knowledge of everything beneath the sky. If they gazed about them, looking intently, so they were perfect in knowledge of everything beneath the sky. If they gazed about them, looking intently, they beheld that which was in the sky and that which was upon the earth instantly they were able to behold everything they did not have to walk to see all that existed beneath the sky they merely saw it from wherever they were damn so it's like this is like perfect spirit like this is the image you're talking Adam you know what I mean then you have those that are begotten, but then you have those that are the actual energy. And is that what it means, you know what I'm saying? When Deuteronomy 34 says that Moses' body was left unabated, his countenance, you know what I'm saying, was left perfect because he's pure energy. How does this relate to Akhenaten in Egypt? This pure energy that is unified. So they are perfect in knowledge. They did not have to walk to see all that existed beneath the sky. They merely saw it from wherever they were. Thus their knowledge became full. Their vision passed beyond the trees and the rocks. Beyond the lakes and seas. Beyond the mountains and valleys. Truly they were very esteemed people. These Balam Kits. Balam Akab. Mahukuta. And Ikwa. Ikwi Balam. So these were four great spirits we're talking about. All right? They would call them gods, right? They would call them gods. These are gods amongst men. 
All right, let's get this right quick. The gratitude of the first man. Then the framer and the shaper asked them, what is the nature of your existence? Do you know it? Do you not look and listen? Are you not, are not your speech and your walk good? Behold now, therefore, and see that which is beneath the sky. Are not the mountains clear? Do you not see the valleys? Try again, they were told. Try it then. Try it then, they were told. Thus their vision of everything beneath the sky was completed, and they gave thanks to the framer and shaper, mother and father. Wisdom in your Hawa. Truly, we thank you, doubly, doubt, doubly, triply, doubly, triply, that we were created, that we were given our mouths and our faces. We were able to speak and to listen. We were able to ponder, to move about. We know much, for we have learned that which is far and near. We have seen the great and the small, all that exists in the sky and on the earth. We thank you, therefore, that we were created, that we were given frame and shape. We became because of you, our grandmother, and you, our grandfather. They said when they gave thanks for their frame and shape, their knowledge of everything that they saw was complete, the four corners and the four sides, that which is within the sky, and that which is within the earth. But this did not sound good to the framer and shaper. It is not good what you have said. That they that we have framed and shaped, they said, we have learned great and small. The displeasure of the gods. Thus their knowledge was taken back by she who was born children and he who has begotten sons. What now can be done to them so that their vision reaches only nearby? Wait, so let's back it up. So you know we you know we we thinking that they, you know what I'm saying, having a having a a pure water dialogue, but what happened? So their knowledge of everything was complete. The four corners of the four sides, that which is within the sky. All right, let's back up a little bit. So let's see what displeased the framer and shaper. Let's uh, let's tune in a little bit. So truly, we thank you doubly, triply that we were created. And that we were given our mouths and our faces. We were able to speak and to listen. We were able to ponder. And to move about. We know much for we have learned that which is far and near. We have seen the great and the small. All that exists in the sky and on the earth. We thank you therefore that we were created. And that we were given frame and shape. We became because of you, our grandmother and our grandfather. They said when they gave thanks for their frame and shape, their knowledge of everything they saw was complete. The four corners and the four sides, that which is within the sky and that which is within the earth. So, you know, you read it and it's like, all right, well, you, there's something about this great and small. You know, we're getting this translation. I know we're not getting the pure water. Pure, pure, pure water. You know, we're just getting a translation. Now, I wish we could get more. But then it says, uh, thus. But this did not sound good to the frame and shaper. It is not good what they have said that they that we have framed and shaped. It is not good what they have said they that we have framed and shaped. They said we have learned everything great and small. You know, so something about them thinking that they knew everything. Interesting. Thus their knowledge was taken back by she who was born children and he who has begotten sons. 
what now can be done to them so that their vision reaches only nearby. So now they can't see as gods see per se. So that only a little of the face of the earth can be seen by them. Now you could only see so far. Wow. For it is not good what they say. Is not their existence merely framed, merely shaped? Is it a mistake that they have become like gods? <laughs> How does this remind you of eating from the eating from the tree? The tree of life. Adam and Eve, and they saw and they became like God. Now these, you know, are the first four men that just came out of the spirit essence. Let's go. You know, look, you were literally spliced and diced. You were spread apart. You were spread to the four corners. Your entire essence, every part of your story was split apart and put in all kind of different religions and abstractions and ideologies. So it's going to sound all it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound strange and weird. But all the shit you learned today. In Catholic school, Christian school, or whatever, mosque, or whatever, it would sound strange to them. And we're just trying to get back to the frequency of the trees, man. We don't need pyramids when we have crystal trees. So they became like gods. But if they do not multiply or are increased, when will the first planting be? When will it dawn if they do not increase? When will it be so? Therefore, we will merely undo them a little now. That is what is wanted because it is not good what we have found out. Their works were, will merely be equated with ours. Their knowledge will extend to the furthest reaches and they will see everything thus spoke heart of sky and Huracan, youngest thunderbolt and sudden sudden thunderbolt sovereign and kitzel serpent she who has born children he who has begotten son epioka and ex mulcane the framer and the shaper you know it's like uh when you have children and you know you don't want them to watch certain programming you know what I'm saying or be exposed to certain things at the wrong time of their development and the child might get mad and say mom you know why are you trying to jam me up man why are you trying to hold me back it's not that they don't want you to be and reach your great potential or you or you know all that it's it's merely that you just don't comprehend order and until you have order and can master yourself in certain ways you know certain things exposed to you at the wrong time might be detrimental you know and just like our children have to trust us we have to trust our framer and our shaper that which has framed us and shaped us as they are called thus they remade the essence of that which they have framed and shaped. They remade the essence. So this remaking of the essence became a whole nother thing. All right. The creation of the mothers of the Kishé nation. Let's keep going. Their eyes were merely blurred by heart of sky. They were blinded like breath upon the face of a mirror. Thus their eyes were blinded. They could see only nearby things. Things were clear to them only, only where they were. Thus their knowledge was lost. The wisdom of the first four people was lost there at their foundation. At their beginning. Thus were the framing and the shaping of our first grandfathers and first and fathers by heart of sky and heart of earth. Framer and shaper, heart of sky, heart of earth. Then their companions, their wives, also came to be. 
It was the gods alone who conceived them as well. As if it were in their sleep, they received them. The women were truly beautiful who were with Balam Keats, Balamaka, Bahuka, Ta, and Igwa, Iqui, Balam. Thus when the men were brought to life, their wives truly came to be as well. At once their hearts rejoiced because of their mates. So you have four Adam and Eves. Remember, Adam fell, right? He ate from the tree and all that. And then he fell in his countenance. Then he couldn't see like he saw after he ate from this tree of life. And because of this conversation that goes on, they're saying the same thing like this Balaam Keats is Adam. And Adam, the same frequency is also Moses. You know what I'm saying? It's the same seed. It's the same energy. Energy is never destroyed. So is Adam Moses? Is Moses Adam? Who could say one or the other, right? But they have these women now. Instead of there being one Eve, there's four. One for each. And we might follow one story, but there's another story and another story and another story. But in your Biblios, you've only been given one story of this one Adam and this one Eve. When the multiplication happened in the whole other frequency. Thus were the men. Thus when the men were brought to life, their wives truly came to be as well. At once their hearts rejoiced because of their mates. Beautiful. These then are the names of the wives. Kahapaluna was the name of the wife of Balaam Keats. Komiha, Kamiha was the name of the wife of Balamaka. Tsuzuniha was the name of the wife of Mahukuta. Kakwi Kaha was the name of the wife of Ikwia. Ikwi. Balam, these therefore were the names of the wives, they who came to be our rulers. These were they who multiplied the nations, both small and great, multiplied. This, therefore, was our foundation. We were, we, the Quiche people. There were many who came to be blood letters and sacrificers. Right? Well, we know that we had many, you know what I'm saying, evil kings. <laughs> we had many, you know what I'm saying, Ones that went astray in different directions, especially dealing with Egypt here. So let's go. Let's surf that way. There are no longer merely four now, but four were the mothers of the Quiche people. Each of the people had different names when they multiplied there in the east. Truly, these became the names of the people. Sovereign, ball player, masker, and... Sun Lord. All right. These are the titles of the people. It was there in the east that they multiplied. The beginning of the Tamub and the Eko is known. Eko is known. It's like Jacob, right? And one that came from there in the east, Balaam Keats, was the grandfather, the father of nine great houses of the Kaveks. Balaam Akab was the grandfather, the father of nine great houses of the Nahi, Nahibs. Mahukuta, Mahukuta was the grandfather, the father of four great houses of Ahua Kishé. Thus there were three divisions of lineages, tribes. Who are you today? Copper color race is found here by the European. Being called black and African American. But you've never seen one slave ship in your entire life. Not even in the museum, nigga. All you've seen is sketches, nigga. Just like the sketches of your ball spitting earth. <laughs> sketches and images in CGI. You've never seen one actual photograph of earth 
<laughs> your entire life. And you never seen one slave ship anywhere. I mean, there should be millions of these things, man. As much as transporting hundreds of millions of us with no cargo. Where's the cargo? How are we going to be the cargo? And they're going to have cargo of food for their, for their, uh, for their crew. What they eating, man? How big is these ships, man? How many trips is this, man? 300 here, 100 here. Come on, man. There's millions of us, man. We are the copper color races they found here. The proof is in the pudding. Until you start finding slave ships popping up where they just burned all the slave ships down. How many slave ships should be all over the place? Every other street should be a slave ship. You are the copper color races they found here. Dig on it. The lineages that existed. The names of their grandfathers and fathers were not for, forgotten. They who multiplied and proliferated there in the east, the Tamub and the Iqab came as well, along with the 13 allied nations, the 13 houses. So a lot of times we say here in 12 tribes, you keep hearing 13, which is interesting. You know, they got something against 13, right? Friday the 13th. Again, everything these people are scared of, you really got to look at. They're scared of snakes. <laughs> They're scared of number 13. All right. Something about the magic that maybe breaks their spell. All right. The Rabinos, the Coxiquels, the Atakinahas, as well as the Zakas and Lamaks, the Kumats and the Tuhulahas. I am trying, man. All right. There's a gang of them. There's a gang of them. All right. You read it. You read it. Of these we shall speak only of the nations that became great among the allied nations. They who became great we shall declare. There were many others that came out of the citadel after them, each one of them a division. We have not written their names, but they also multiplied there in the east. Many people arrived in the darkness in the days of their increase, for the sun was yet to be born. Whoa! You see it. Don't act like you don't. <laughs> ah, I mean, hey, we talking about a time before the sun was born? Many people arrived in darkness in the days of their increase, for the sun was yet to be born. There was no light in the days of their increase. They were all as one, crowded together as they walked there in the east. There was no one to provide for their sustenance. They would merely lift up their faces to the sky. For they did not know where to go. Almost reminds me of the Estevanico and them crying out, Child of the sun, please bring the sun out. Because <laughs> you're dealing with the people who, for the sun was yet to be born for them. The sun didn't even jam with them. The sun didn't even deal with them. It wasn't that the sun wasn't created. It probably just wasn't dealing with them. Let's go. You're talking about darkness, man. Dark caves, dark... All right, let's go. This they did for a long time there among the Maquis, among the black people, <laughs> and the white people. The people of many appearances and many tongues. Now, what do they mean? Huh? Don't you want to know what they mean by black people and white people? How it's being translated. The people of many appearances and many tongues. Hmm. Many tongues. They were destitute in their existence at the edge of the sky's foundation. 
So this they did for a long time there among the Maquis, among the black and white people. And if we're, <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just messing with this wave right here, man. But you know, if this is at all referring to if this is at all referring to a time where the sun was yet to be born and you know, we can imagine a time where they're begging for the sun to come out. They're begging as the Veneco once a year to see the sun. We're talking about a region, possibly, where the sun was yet to be born. Man, all right. Then we're talking about a place destitute in their existence at the edge of the sky's foundation. What? What does it mean? I'm with you, y'all. Y'all tell me, man. Leave a comment, man. Let me know what this means, man. That these Mekkes, you know, somebody dig on these Mekkes. I wonder if we can just surf the wave right quick. Just kind of put it in Google. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what I want. That's not what I want. That's what I get for surfing the wave. All right. I'm just going to spell it out. M-A-G-U-E. Why? M A G U E Y, yes. Please, uh, nah, man. People. Ancient? I don't know. Let's go. I'm talking about plants. Plants, plants. What about the people? Talking about drinks and plants, Aztec history. Plant, they keep talking about the plant. Interesting, right? Interesting, what are they hiding? All right, let's go. So something about these McQueen people and they were destitute in their existence at the edge of the sky's foundation. Black people and white people kind of reminds me, you know. All right. And they were mountain people. Okay. They were hidden and without homes. So you're talking about people in the caves. Black and white. All right. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm getting at. Only among the small mountains and the great mountains did they go. Mm, kind of like they were trapped in the Mediterranean. All right, let's go. It is as if they were lacking in direction. They couldn't cross the... They couldn't cross the barrier. They were like kind of trapped in the black plague of darkness and destitute of light begging for the sun. They were trapped in the mountains of the Caucasus. I don't know, man. I know it probably may got... It could be something, it could be nothing. I'm just I'm just talking out loud, surfing away. All right, so they were lacking in direction, as if they used to say, as they used to say. And it's said that in those days they quarreled with the mountain people. There they looked for the coming forth of the sun. They're begging for the sun, Estevanico. When they had one common language. They did not yet call upon wood or stone. They remembered the word of the framer and shaper of heart of sky and heart of earth. It was said they would merely plead for their heartening, their sowing and dawning. These were people of esteem, words of esteem, of honor and of respect. They would lift up their faces to the sky and they pleaded for their daughters and their sons. Alas, you framer and you shaper, behold us, hear us. Do not abandon us. Do not allow us to be overthrown. What do you say today when you call upon your creator? Do you say, behold, alas, you framer and shaper. Behold us, hear us. Do not abandon us, our creator, Hawa. 
Do not allow us to be overthrown. You are Hawa. You are Hawa, the power in the sky and on the earth. You, heart of sky, heart of earth, may our sign, our word be given for as long as there is sun and light. Then may it be sown, may it dawn, may there be true life-giving roads and pathways give us steadfast light that our nation be made steadfast. May the light be favorable that our nation may be favored. May our lives be favored so that all creation may be favored as well. Give this to us, you, O Akan, youngest thunderbolt and sudden thunderbolt, youngest Nanavak and sudden Nanavak, falcon and Hanapu, sovereign and Kitsu, curtain, serpent, she who was born children and he who was begotten sons, Expoyoko and Esmukane. Grandmother of days and grandfather, grandmother of day and grandmother of light. Then may it be sown, then may it dawn. They, they said, then they fastened and cried, they fasted and cried out in prayer. So they fasted and cried out in prayer. Copper color race is found here. They fasted and cried out in prayer to their power. They fixed their eyes firmly on their dawn, looking there to the east. They watched closely for the morning star, the great star that gives it light at the birth of the sun. They looked to the womb of the sky. What would you call that today? The uh, the uh, great drift or the, or the great rift? They looked to the womb of the sky and the womb of the earth, to the pathways of famed and shaped people, the pathways of framed and shaped people. Then spoke Balam Keats, Balam Aka, Mahukuta, and Ikoi, Bali, Balam. We shall surely await the dawn, they said. They were great sages and wise men, blood letters and honorers, as they are called. <laughs> They did not exist then wood or there did not exist their wood or stone to watch over our first mother and fathers. They were therefore weary in their hearts as they awaited the dawn. There were many nations then. They were there there with the Yaqui, Yaqui people, the blood letters and sacrifices. Let us go and search to look for one who may protect us. We may find one before him we may speak. For here we only feign existence, and there is not a guardian for us, said therefore Balam Keith, Balam Akab, and Mahu Kuta, and Nikwi Balam. They heard news of a citadel, and there they went. They arrived at Tulan. Hey right, man, then he goes into the rabbit to lie. Right, let me get this right quick. Let's get the small print. This is for five forty one. Right, right. Okay, X B Yako and X Mukane. It's a lot of drop in that fine print, man. So it says, though those are titles, Ex Mukane and Ex Biokok, those are titles for the ancestor couple, Framer and Shaper. They are arranged in reverse order, or as a ch chism, chasm, with the names of the grandparent deities that follow. These are the titles of Grandmother Goddess, Ex Mugani. Right. Yaqui is the quiche name for the inhabitants of ancient Mexico. Yaqui or Yaquo. Does it sound like Jacob? 
ya kwa ya kwi is the name for the inhabitants of ancient Mexico American a native of America Mexico applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races right. you gotta dig it man we gotta get this my queen man stop playing we're talking about Mexico copper colored races we just talking framer and shaper man Talking Framer and Shaper. This is the beginning of the ancient traditions of this place called Quiche. Here we shall write. We shall begin to tell the ancient stories of the beginning, the origin of all that was done in the citadel of the Quiche among the people of the Quiche nation. It says Quiche word root is used to describe the beginning or foundation of the author's words concerning the history the quiche people the subsequent narrative is thus seen as growing like a plant from this root quiche root let's go here we shall gather the manifestation the declaration the account of the sowing and the dawning by the framer and the shaper she who was born children and he who was begotten sons as they are called we got that creator of the green earth, creator of the blue sky, Rakwa. I beat it out. These are titles for the divine couple, ex Mukane, ex Biyoko, Alam, and Kajalam, as simply mother and father, a more accurate translation for Alam. However, is she who was born children? From the perfect aspect of the root verb, Al, to bear children, the name of the male god Kajalam. Specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. Thus he who has begotten sons. Fray Bartolome de las Casas wrote in the 16th century. That the people of Guatemala worship at the, as their principal gods. The great father and great mother. That were in heaven. Apparently referring to the divine couple. Wow. You know what I mean? And here we got this before. Zeko Framer refers to one who makes something by putting things together. That is wisdom. When you're in the frequency of your father, your mother gives you wisdom. Your father grants you your mother. Solomon prayed to the shaper for his mama. Wisdom to fortify his kingdom. A building from stone or adobe. A meal from various ingredients. Your mother or woven cloth from individual threads. Bito, bito. Shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling, molding pottery from clay. I molded you. I formed you. Vibration forms vibration shapes you're in the vibration you're in the energy you're in the seed the sprouting seed of the shaper he who begets sons he who begets sons the seed the energy the shape the modeling the molding pottery from clay or sculpture from carved stone thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance thus giving shape to the water the Framer and the Shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods or powers, the most frequently mentioned gods involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. The most frequently mentioned powers is that of your mother and father, so-called Negro copper color race found here, involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants. The Framer and the Shaper are the most frequently mentioned power Ref most frequently mentioned power of the negro involved in the creation of the world and its inhabitants 
Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to an otherwise, to an already existing, to matter that already existed. Their names imply that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed. Rather than the conjuring, rather than conjuring something out of nothing. So you give shape to something that exists, something that the energy that already is. I am the alpha. I am. I am the beginning. I am the beginning. I am the beginning. There is no beginning. It is the energy that already exists. You give frame and shape to that water already existed rather than conjuring something out of nothing this pair of gods was so important that soon after the spanish conquest father domenico viso used their cliche names to refer to the god of the old testament make sure you got all that so your framer and your shaper were so important that after the Spanish conquest, Domenico de Vicio, this friar, this father, whatever they call father, right, this Spaniard missionary, convert or die, Domenico de Vicio used their quiche root names to refer to the power of the Old Testament. Which is why there's a separation between the Old Testament and the New. Zeus comes in the New Testament. He is Zeus. Now they bring their Zeus in because they've always worshipped their Jupiter. How did they reintroduce? Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Zeus. He is Zeus. Now I'm Jesus. Come through me. I'm the son. I'm the son. Well, Joshua is the son of New. Joshua is the sprouting seed and has 12 disciples leading you to your promised land. Joshua, man. Joshua, man. Oh, what really went down? This pair of gods was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, your framer and your shaper were so important. Your framer that refers to who... One who makes something by putting things together, making a meal from various ingredients. Your shaper refers to one who makes something by modeling, molding pottery from clay. Giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and shaper were so important. Listen up, Negro. Copper color race that they just, they just found here. 1828. Copper color race, the American. Listen up. Framer and shaper, your mother and father are so important. Your mama and daddy are so important. Your powers are so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, the invasion. Now apply to the descendants of Europeans born here. Europeans, descendants, descendants of Europeans, Spaniards.